for my March review. I had so much fun reading these. Some of them were just like an emotional roller coaster. Some of them were like a reality check. Some of them were just a good time read. I organized them in order of how I rated them or how much I liked them. First on our list would be The Body Is Not An Apology. The second would be Canicula, one of my Spanish picks. Coming in at number three would be Their Eyes for Watching God. This one is still one of my favorite books in this month's pick. This one's coming in at three. And next is Hood Feminism. And lastly, La Cresta de Leon, which is another one of my Spanish picks. So let's talk about these. This one was a Goodreads rating of 4.2. Um, I would definitely think it's like in the four area. I really really liked it Although I don't agree with everything that she has to say There are a few points that I Have my own perspectives on and that's okay. That's exactly what she's talking about. She's talking about self-reflecting on your own personal experiences your own biases and I really like that she talks about what your image was or what your experience was growing up and your your body shaming experience basically right because we've all been there where we get body shamed at some point hey if sometimes you don't completely agree with every author out there i mean they're people too and they have their own opinions but most of her opinions i completely agree with she has really good um little self-reflective questions um, and they're really good if you stop and think about them you actually get some interesting information and I love that she quoted Maya Angelou uh, she says when we know better we do better we can do better by giving ourselves more love so yeah I liked that and then she keeps kind of stating we're not all poodles <laughs> Not to like compare us with dogs, but we're not all poodles. Like I love that analogy because we are all made different, different body forms. We all come in different shapes and sizes. And it's something that we just need to accept and that diversity is beautiful and that we're all beautiful in our own ways. And we need to self-reflect what our own biases are and what we've grown up with kind of thinking and knowing and she has a little snippet where she talks about disability and how we define disability and how our bodies define our abilities to do things and how that's not always true. We have these things in our society that kind of are systematic oppression basically. Um, I really liked this one. I really felt challenged. I really felt like it was, it did make me self-reflective. I think it, it is a little difficult to jump into at the beginning. She is touching a very cliche topic like self-love that we all kind of know about and self-care and self-awareness, but she's diving in deeper. So it is a little bit difficult to keep up with the concepts. Um, I think I just pushed through the beginning and then once we got through the beginning where she was trying to like deep dive, I found it easier to read. Not get stuck in all of the statistics and things like that, but the bigger picture overall. So I really liked this one. I really liked how it made me feel. It made me feel validated and made me feel comfortable with myself and my body and my image and where I'm at physically and athletically and where I'm at, being present with my body and being thankful and being happy about it and yeah, loving myself. <laughs> so that one is The Body Is Not An Apology by Sonia Renee Taylor. And next up on my list is a list of books. Um, coming in at number three is Their Eyes Were Watching God. I loved rereading this and I love that she's playing with 
the southern vernacular and dialect and I think that that's what makes this book unique and she has so many reoccurring themes that I loved and I remember when I first read it I identified a lot with her journey through relationships and independence and how she goes in and out of these relationships and you kind of feel it you kind of feel like the oppression you kind of feel like there's this theme about her hair and feathers and birds it kind of means independence and freedom and then like this other theme of like speech and silence which is kind of like that oppression and the different relationships she finds herself in ultimately I identified with her relationship journeys I think overall it's still a spiritual journey and I love that because I do identify with that that at the end of the day whether you're in a relationship or not your journey will still always be with yourself and finding your voice and finding your identity and now that I'm much older and I've been through a lot of experiences with relationships I understand it fully and I feel fulfilled when I read it so I, I remember reading it when I was younger before I was in all these relationships and like had so much experience and traumas and, and learned definitions of things. I almost saw it like a Alice in Wonderland, like a coming of age and when I finished reading it when I was younger I almost felt a little bit scared <laughs> and like in wonderment and wondering what was out there for me and now that I read it again as like an adult in a relationship I feel like it's wholesome and it does validate my journey that I went through and there is a lot of things that kind of overlap and she wrote this in the 1930s can you believe that 1930s like that's so crazy that she's able to encapsulate all of these emotions uh not just of like the dichotomy of men and women and, and the gender roles but she was able to capture a lot of the experiences that you go through in relationships. Um, but yeah, Zora Neale Hurston, I admire her so much. She was an anthropologist studying African American folklore and she was in the scene. She was in the scene of New York, which they called the Harlem Renaissance, where they were celebrating African American culture and literature and dance and theater. And yeah, she was friends with like uh, Sigmund Freud, which was one of the leading anthropologists back then. And then she was friends with like a bunch of poets like Langston Hughes. Um, she married twice. She was just, she was just awesome. Um, I really like her and admire her. And I think this is a beautiful piece of art that has wasted time and it's still one of my favorites. Time for a drink break. So we got two beers today. Um, the first one is Haku Taku. It's from Martin House Brewing Company from Fort Worth, Texas. It's a whiskey barrel aged imperial rice stout. This one was rated at a 4.08. Appearance. It's very dark, looks like a stout, um, can't see through it. The head is small, it's not the biggest that I've seen. It kind of was a little late and it's kind of fading out now. Smell. <sighs> you can definitely smell the whiskey. A little nutty smell to it. Taste. Ooh, that's yum. The taste is definitely rich and full, like a proper stout. You definitely get notes of chocolate, maybe some molasses. <laughs> Mouthful is smooth with some carbonation, not a lot of carbonation. It's a little grainy. You definitely get the whiskey aftertaste. I give it like a high three. It's very smooth, which makes it easy to drink. 
and I think as a stout, that's probably what puts it up in the higher uh, rating since it's rated out of four. Um, but yeah, 3.8. I'm still a big fan of the pretzel stout. That was bomb. Um, so, hood feminism. Notes from the woman that a movement forgot by Nikki Kendall. I really liked this one. Um, this one made me really sad made me really sad. I think for the month of March it definitely represented the feminist movement and she educated me so much. There were so many terms that I had never even heard of that make me so sad but it's crazy that that's happening. Disparities that are still going on. Overall I do think we are moving forward but we still have a lot of work to do. Like, we hear about it, but then we also, you know, like food deserts, um, food insecurity. We hear about it, and, you know, a lot of that does affect women, kind of like food, food insecurity. A lot of women have to work to maintain their kids, like a lot of single moms, and they don't have time to make healthy meals, and then the food provided to them in their neighborhoods is not necessarily good food. Or nutritional food so it talks about a lot of things like that that not only affect all people but especially our women she talks about how a lot of the feminist movements haven't necessarily provided basic living security but it's provided privilege for a few people um, and I think it is something difficult to take in and digest, but it's definitely worth reading. It's really good that she's putting this out there, no filter, and again, you don't have to agree with everything, but this is somebody's experience and what they've been through, so you don't have to understand it completely, but the fact that you read it and make yourself aware and educate yourself and be open to listening her, to her discourse. I think that's very important for us to continue growing and to continue making the changes that we need. I don't think you'll regret it. It'll educate you on some terms that I didn't even know. Like, I'm still so surprised that that's even a thing. Some terms that I think some people don't even talk about because it's so unfair and it's not PR. It's very unfiltered and raw and I think it's important to not shield ourselves from that and learn from it and actually know what's going on and be connected to other people's experiences. But I really liked this one. But we're going to move on to the next drink. It is from the same company, the Martin House Brewing Company in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, this one is a sour IPA with pomegranates. IPAs, you have so much to play with and a big range of flavors so in celebration of ending winter and moving on to spring I thought that this would be the perfect way to start with a stout and an IPA that is a big head probably not the best pour honestly it's my BZ um, okay so we're gonna have to wait for this to go down a little bit because I didn't pour it right Red sits at a 3.7 rating on mine, and it's, it's translucent, like the IPA should be. The smell is pretty citrusy. Taste is pretty fruity and citrusy. It's actually pretty smooth. Mouthful. Carbonation is pretty minimal. It is pretty light and it's not as piercing as most IPAs. Overall, for an IPA, I think it's very refreshing and citrusy. 7, 3.8, it's up there. Entonces, para continuar en español. <laughs> Canícula. Hay muchos temas de la cultura mexicano-americana, como la llorona. <laughs> Y como es una historia en que los adultos tratan de asustar a los niños para que no se acerquen al agua, 
porque en fin, cuando vives en la frontera o cerca del río grande, eh, hay un riesgo. Entonces, si les dices, no te acerques al agua con una historia que los asusta, es algo que ayuda a sobrevivir temas de cómo es estar en la frontera cruzando de un lado al otro, cómo es vivir una vida en México y cómo es vivir una vida en los Estados Unidos. Había bastante botánica en este libro sobre las plantas que se encuentran en Texas y eso me gustó bastante. Uh, me encanta la albahaca y eh, hablaron sobre la hierba buena y qué importante es la hierba buena en la cultura mexicana. Eh, y cosas diferentes así que siempre han estado en mi vida pero nunca me he dado cuenta que es como la cultura mexicana americana y me gustó mucho el libro y entre todas esas cosas me contando la historia de esta muchacha que va creciendo y todas las etapas diferentes de su vida so, me hizo sentir muy feliz y nostálgica y es un buen libro aunque toca temas medios emocionales eh, siempre lo termina muy poético y muy ah, sensiblemente. Entonces me gusta bastante porque siempre deja una emoción buena. Este para mí fue número 2 y sí le doy como un 4.2 porque sí fue muy bueno para mí y fácil de leer y aprendes mucho sobre la cultura mexicana americana. Para el segundo libro en español es La Cresta de León por Cristina Rivera Garza. Este libro, este libro te tienes que dejar fluir porque piensas que algo está pasando y luego te lo cambia completamente. Entonces no te puedes aferrar a una historia. Es el rechazo de los binarismos en la sociedad. Entonces, crees que estás leyendo algo, pero es algo más, te lo cambia. Y juega como con la seducción, juega con el miedo y la seguridad. Cada capítulo habla sobre un binarismo. En el primer capítulo habla sobre el deseo y el miedo. Y habla sobre la muerte y la vida. Uh, habla sobre la cordura y la locura. Entonces miras esos temas que se oponen y te tienes que dejar fluir. <ríe> y entonces este libro es muy corto, es fácil de leer. Fue muy rico para leer y me gustó bastante. Y sí, fue como un escape mental porque no estaba tratando de averiguar qué era... El discurso era nada más leer y fluir y entender lo que era lo que estaba tratando de dar la autora. Uh, le daría como un 3.8. Tiene un 3.6 en Goodreads, entonces un 3.8, casi un 4. Sí me gustó bastante, entonces es un buen libro. They were very good, very educational. If you can get your hands on any of these, that would be great. Uh, let me know what you guys think, if you guys have read any of these. I know Their Eyes Were Watching God was a high school uh, read for me. La Canicula is also like a 90s book, but it's really good. So again, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys like and subscribe. I will come back with April's reads and some fun stuff. I'm hoping to post a little bit more uh, just daily vlogs and some more creative stuff. Thank you guys for watching and River is sleepy. I think it's your bedtime. So thanks again for the support. Lots of love. <laughs> River says hi too. <laughs> Ciao.